Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some small town romance recommendations. So small town romance is a very large and in charge recently so I thought I'd give you some of my romance recommendations for this trope. And yeah, let's get started. I have 10 recommendations but like one could be a whole series if that makes sense so... Yeah, let's go talk about them. The first one that I want to mention is a series. Well, first I want to talk about some of the series in general. So first is the Becker Brothers series by Candy Steiner. Now I've only read one book in this series, okay? But the first book is On the Rocks. Um, I've read book two, which is neat, and I really enjoyed it. This uh, series takes place all in this very small town, um, and everybody knows everybody. And I think the heroine of book one is like, about to get married and then she runs away with the hero instead of getting married which is very scandalous because uh everybody knows what happened in the situation in the town and then the second one neat is the one that i read and this is a like a um rivaling family situation and i think like the guys in this series they're all brothers who are a part of like this whiskey making business in the town so neat is like um a rivaling family's romance where like the heroine's family and his don't get along whatsoever and so they have to hide their relationship but i really liked neat and i really need to read the other books in the series i believe there's four and i can't wait to get to them next is a historical series this is the spindle cove series by tessa dare i only own a few of them but there are i believe six five five books in this series not including the novellas uh so the ones that i own this is book one a night to surrender and then these two, Lord Dashwood missed out and um, The Beauty of the Blacksmith are little novellas in the series. And then book four, it, no, book five is this one. This is Do You Want to Start a Scandal? Let's talk about book one. This is A Night to Surrender. I feel like this is a great starter book to the series um, because it really introduces Spindle Cove, the town. So Susanna in here is our heroine and her father, and her have decided to basically put together this town called Spindle Cove to kind of be like a refuge for young women who have been wanting a vacation from the ton society or have kind of been ostracized by them like they want to have like a welcoming home for them so they've created Spindle Cove. So each book in the series takes place at Spindle Cove, this very small town filled with women who just have had some kind of like rotten luck or have experienced some trauma or just want to take a break from that kind of life uh, from society. In this book specifically, Victor Bramwell has been tasked by the king to come form a militia in Spindle Cove. But Spindle Cove is full of women. <laughs> so he has to find the very few men in this town to form a militia. And it's a very like big ragtag group of men that don't really look like soldiers, you know? Victor and here and Susanna end up falling in love, even though there's a huge animosity between the two of them at first, because he's coming into her small town, you know? Um, but I really enjoyed this one. It's a great starter book in the series. It's not my favorite in the series, but it's a great introduction to Spindle Co. Next I have Shift Just Got Real by Ruby Dixon. Now this whole series, the Bear Bites series, all take place in the same town but I didn't like any of, their, any of the other books in the series. So I'm not gonna mention them. <laughs> I mean, you can read them if you want, uh, but the only one that I think is worth reading is Shift Just Got Real. So this is Ruby's Bear Shifter Romance series. This one is about Ryan and Mal. So Ryan is a human in this small town and some of the humans don't know that they live in a predominantly shifter town. Um, Mal just so happens to be one of those shifters. He's a bear shifter. Um, and so one day when he's at the grocery store, he ends up scenting his faded mate for the first time. And he's so excited. He's like, where is she? I gotta find her. He ends up finding her in the grocery store and it's Ryan and she's underage. And he's mortified. He's like, this woman is too young. Like, no, that's not happening. So he goes, runs away into the mountains in this small town and, um, becomes a recluse. And so it's a few years later, he's been living in this mountain for quite a long time. Ryan is now, I think like 21, and she's always had a crush on Mal when he comes into town for supplies and stuff. And so this is about her finally revealing her feelings for Mal, not knowing that they're faded mates. I really enjoyed this one, okay? There's also a great caretaking scene in here. Mal likes to like watch over Ryan to make sure she's safe and stuff sometimes. So he's like looking through her bedroom window, <laughs> being kind of creepy. Um, and so then he thinks she's coming outside. So he walks away into the woods and he ends up actually stepping on a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> like Ryan hears him and comes and rescues him and saves him from the bear trap. 
um, while he's a human. Anyway, this series is really entertaining, but I only really liked this one in the series. So I really recommend this one if you're into paranormal romances. Next is Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly or the whole Popular Falls series. So every book in this series takes place at Popular Falls, which is a small town. This one is about Sophia and... Braxton? Yes, Braxton. So when Sophia was little, she ended up living in Popular Falls with her mother and father. And then her mother tells her that her dad cheated on her. And so they go and he, she takes Sophia to live in New York and hasn't seen her father since. Um, and he hasn't really reached out to form a relationship with her since then. But recently she got a phone call saying that her grandmother has passed and she comes back to Popular Falls for the funeral to stay with his family and everything. And there she ends up meeting one of the ranch hands at her father's ranch, uh, Braxton. And it's very much enemies to lovers but then it grows into something more i really enjoyed this one if you love the simple wild by k.a tucker this is one for you it gives me a lot of the same vibes as that book um but each book in the series takes place in popular falls i haven't read the other books in the series i do own one of them um but i think it's like book four um so yeah all of these are on kindle unlimited and just like these covers can we talk about them because they're just they're stunning i then have the air he breathes by Brittany c cherry um this one oh, is such an emotional gut punch. Literally all of Brittany C. Cherry's books are like that. This book has a lot of trigger warnings. There's death of a loved one, grief, and then specifically just like depression overall. Um, so Elizabeth in here and her five-year-old daughter experienced something very tragic um, a few months ago. And so she's been living at her mother's house in a different town for quite a while. And so she's decided to bring her daughter back home. When she comes back after months of not living there, she has a new next door neighbor named Tristan who lives alone, is a huge grump. And the town has deemed him the town grump in this very small town. And Tristan has also experienced some very traumatic things recently. And he ended up losing his wife and child. Elizabeth and Tristan really don't like each other because Tristan is a huge a-hole, but the two of them realize that they're both grieving somebody, multiple somebodies, and they use each other to pretend that their loved one is still alive. And this gets very toxic, obviously, but then the two of them finally realize how toxic it is and they, they fizzle that out and then they end up actually falling for who the, that person really is, not this fantasy they made up in their head. I loved this, okay? I love any Britney C. Cherry. Her Elements series is just so sticking good. This one is just filled with angst and toxicity and grief. So please be aware of that. But yeah, everyone in this small town just knows Tristan is this big grumpy man um, and they don't even try to get to know him at first. Oh, I just forgot like the main point of this book is when she's driving into town, like coming back into town to move back into town, Tristan and her end up meeting because Tristan's on a walk with his dog, a run with his dog in the rain, and she hits the dog with her car. The dog lives, don't worry. He is so pissed at her for hitting his dog. Um, and so she ends up taking them to the vet and she's like, I'll pay for everything. I am so sorry, blah, blah, blah. So that's their that's their meet cute or meet tragedy moment. <laughs> then I have a Damaged Goods by Talia Hebert. This is actually book number 1.5, a part of the Ravenswood series. So the first book in the series is A Girl Like Her and you have to read this book after that one. So after book one in the series, then you can get to this one because you meet the heroine from this book in book one. And she's a little bit of like the mean girl in book one, but then you realize what she's going through and she has her own little novella story in Damaged Goods. Laura is this woman's name and she didn't know that she married an abusive man. He is very abusive. He hits her. He yells at her. He is abusive and she's had enough of it she's done she's running away the only kicker is she's pregnant with his kid and so she runs away to this small town that she used to go on summer vacations with with her family she goes there alone to take a break from her life and to hopefully figure out what to do about her husband um and there she runs into samir who was her first everything as a kid her first kiss her first time her first boyfriend and the two of them reconnect and um fall in love all over again or they may have never stopped loving each other um and i just thought this was a great second chance romance and like the baby aspect in here added a whole nother level a whole nother level of angst in here and samir was just like i love you no matter what i don't care if you're carrying another man's baby i will help you raise this baby i love them and tully hembert is just an amazing writer so she did this so well next is bitter rivals by jay sterling this is a enemies to lovers rivaling families romance so these two characters are from rivaling families they're also neighbors so they are both the children of um these families who own 
uh, orchard, like winery grape orchards. Is that what that's called? They both have like fields of grapes to make wine on their properties, whatever. And so growing up when they were in high school, they were kind of like friends or whatever. They both had like crushes on each other, but then the two of them end up becoming enemies for some reason. And it's years later, they're both adults now. The two of them <laughs> let their hatred turn into some steamy times. They end up falling in love with each other even though they do not want to because their families would hate it. I thought this was such an entertaining read. Um, it's my first Jay Sterling. I haven't read any since, but um, if you want a very good rivaling families romance, this is definitely one to pick up. This is a small town, by the way. Like everybody knows everybody here. I just want to mention that because this is a small town wreck video. So um, this is a small town and it is very known in this small town that these two families are rivals. Next is Beach Read by Emily Henry. January is our heroine in here and she has experienced some grief. Her father just passed and she had no idea that her father owned this beach house. It's actually a lake house. I don't know why called beach read when it doesn't take place on the beach it's a lake house the house is on a lake anyway um she goes to the lake house and um decides to stay there for a couple of days trying to come to grips with her father passing and some of the hurtful things that he did when he was alive and she's also there to kind of work on her next novel i believe she writes like romances rom-coms this Beach House is in a very small town um, that she's never been to before where everybody knows everybody. And next door to her is August. And he's also a writer. He was actually her rival in college. In their college writing course, she would consider him her rival in class. And so she's very shocked to find out that her college rival is next door to her in this beach house. And so August is also a writer, but he writes kind of like true crime investigation cult stories or something like that. And so the two of them are both kind of like in a writer's block. So they go on little adventures together in this small town to kind of like spark their ability to write and they also kind of trade genres too where she wants him to write like a happily happy ending to his book with like romance in it and he wants her to come and research some of the things that are happening in his book i really enjoyed this one and um the small town aspect in here was very interesting because there's like some scenes where they're like at like a book club i think and like everybody knows everybody about what everyone's doing in the town and it's very funny next i have her sweet alpha by thayer king this is a paranormal werewolf shifter romance so in this world it's essentially our world but if werewolves existed and they were just outed to humans, like humans didn't know that werewolves were a thing, that they were living in society with them. And so that was just revealed. So humans are a little skeptical about werewolves. Obviously they're werewolves. Um, and so Dade is one of said werewolves and he's an alpha and he's close to his 30th birthday and he has not found his mate yet. And he is very upset and very sad. And he's kind of like down in the dumps. And so Dade and his pack are driving through this small town and decide to go to this diner to get a bite to eat. He's sitting there with his pack in the booth and he ends up smelling his mate. And he's like, oh my gosh, where is she? I need her right now. It turns out to be his server. Her name is Hallie and um, she's a human. She's like a little scared. She's like, what is this giant of a man doing? And then he kind of like tells her, oh, you're my mate, I'm a werewolf, we're gonna be together forever. Like he's very optimistic and very sunshiny about this. He's so happy he's found his mate. And Hallie's just like very skeptical. She's like, first of all, I just learned that werewolves were real and you are ginormous. And I feel like you could like break me in two. Um, you're so huge. And um, I'm a little scared. And she also has past trauma with a previous relationship. Um, and so um, Dave kind of helps her through that. But this small town comes into play a little bit with the werewolf aspect in here. So I thought that was very interesting. So I really enjoyed this one. And it's a very underrated paranormal shifter romance. And lastly, I have Sweet Talk and Lover by Tracy Livesay. I think this whole series is small town, if I'm not mistaken. But this is the first book in the Girls Trip series. I've only read this one in the series. Okay, so this is about Kalia who has been tasked by uh, her boss, um, it's just big like makeup company or whatever, um, to go and shut down this factory in this small town because they're not making enough profit from this factory. The town is called Bradleton. And so she's gonna go do this, but then she ends up meeting the town's like gorgeous mayor and things are kind of like derailed for her. <laughs> so Wyatt is his name and he is not very happy about this factory being shut down because that factory holds a lot of jobs for a lot of people in this small town. And so he's trying to really convince Kalia to not shut it down and then they spend more time together and fall in love, you know? He kind of like is trying to convince her to fall in love with the town itself to show her like 
this factory is these people's like livelihood, you know, and you can't just shut it down. Like you're gonna be depriving a lot of people of money of jobs. Excuse the bone chewing, my dog found a Nyla bone and is chewing it and I can't stop it. I'm so sorry. But anyway, this one was really fun. It's a great enemies to lovers with two very stubborn main characters. So if you want a very good contemporary romance, read this one. It gave me amazing small town vibes for sure. The town is very much involved in this book. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some small town romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and any recommendations that you have for me. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any building related emoji in the comments, like a, any building, a house, a building, a skyscraper, whatever the case may be. Uh, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. Excuse the bone chewing. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.